for the old projects, but I want to talk about your next project. And your next project is going to extend over a few weeks' time. All right. Um, I want you to spend some time thinking about, and I want to think about this collectively, and you're welcome to brainstorm on your own. You're welcome to do things different than we discuss in class. I'm going to um, just, uh, you know, um, throw some ideas out there because this is a bigger, a little bit bigger project, and uh, I don't want to just simply hand it off and, and just let you go. The idea is that I want to play a hand of blackjack. Now, if any of you have an objection to playing card games or whatever, let me know, and we'll come up with an alternative assignment. All right? But um, here's ultimately what I would want. Is everyone familiar with the rules of the game blackjack? Well, I, know, I know the basic rules, but there's variations. Uh, we're going to be pretty basic in terms of it. So. Like no splitting or uh, you know insurance or things like that. You don't have to worry about that. That's something you certainly could put it in if you wanted to, but it's not going to be a requirement. Uh, the idea, of course, is that if I can just briefly describe the parts, but I know you're probably all familiar with the rules, but the parts of it that I'm interested in. Um, you have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, king, jack, queen, king, and ace of four different suits. Spades, clubs, hearts, and diamonds. The spades, the, the, the spades, clubs, hearts, diamonds, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the suit is. You're interested in numerical value of the card. Two through ten are worth their value. So their normal value. So a two is worth a two, a three is worth a three, all the way up through ten. Jack, queen, and king are worth 10. An ace is worth 1 or 11. You start off getting two cards, and the dealer has two cards. You see one of the dealer's cards. All right? So your cards will be two cards face down. You will see one of the dealer's cards. So you might see that the dealer has a king of hearts. All right. You will have like a seven and an eight, let's say. You can ask for a hit, which means another card, or you can say you stay, uh, which means that you're gonna you're going to not get any more cards. Your goal is to get as close to twenty-one as possible without going over. All right. So. Have a value of more than your opponent. Pardon me. Or at least have a card. Value. And and yeah, get closer to twenty-one than your opponent without going over. So, if I took a hit and I got a 10, I would be over, so I would lose. If I would take a hit and let's say I get a four, I'm at 19 now, so I'm gonna stay. All right, at which case, the dealer, the dealer's rules are, are, are algorithmic. In other words, the dealer is going to stay if it's 17 or greater, and it's going to take a hit if it's 16 or less. So that's like logic in the program. You don't have to like randomly decide if it's going to stay or hit. So if the, if the dealer had, let's say, a 7, then the dealer would stay. And you'd win because you have 19 and the dealer has 17. Okay, so that is, uh, that's how it goes. If the dealer, though, took a hit, if the dealer, let's say, had a six and took a hit and got a four, then the dealer would have 20, you'd have 19, the dealer would win. If it's a tie, the dealer wins. Okay, so if you both, if the dealer got a three, then you'd have 19 and the dealer would win. If you have 21 on your first two cards, it's called blackjack, and you automatically win. doesn't matter what the dealer does. All right? There are some variations that say if you get five cards without, the, without busting, that, the, that you win. I don't care if you implement that rule or not. Can you repeat the one before? If you, get... if you got 21 on the first...
first two cards. So that would be an ace. An ace and a, and a ten. Yeah, an ace and one of these four cards. But if you get 21 on three cards and he ties you with 21, the dealer wins. Then, then the dealer wins, correct. All right. Uh, I'm trying to think of anything else. You know, I can answer your questions. It's not like, it, did it like kind of that, like, like after shuffling, you you take some of the cards out, so like you like professional um, card catchers can't like predict what cards will be in the deck. This is not going to be used as, as part of a Vegas tournament, okay. so you don't need to worry about that. Consider this just a friendly game between friends, where none of none of the people are card counters or anything like that. Sure. Okay. Yeah, we can shuffle between every hand. I, the other question that I have is this on the card layer. I understand seeing only one of the dealer's cards, but I didn't get what, what's showing on our hand. So we have two cards that are both face up? No, they're both face down. So how do you know the value? Only you can see it. That's right. You will. Okay, you're absolutely right. They'll both be face up, but. Uh, I'm, what I was describing is if we were actually playing a physical game. Right. Okay. If we were playing a physical game, they would be dealt face down. In the R game, of course, you're right. You have to show them. That was my mistake. Okay. I was talking. I was talking a real game with cards as yeah. opposed to. I think you mean like face down, like when initially handed to you, it'll be face down. So that yeah. Only you can see. Them. Only you can see them. Yeah. Right. So for our game, we could have a face up, but one of his will be face down. One of his will be face down. You're absolutely right. All right. Um, that's, I mean, that's like the rules that I'm interested in. Um, anything else, you know, is, you know, anything else that you might know about blackjack that you want to go and do it, uh, feel free to deal, uh, to, to reshuffle the deck, use a fresh deck each time if you want. Um, or you could keep the deck until it gets below a certain amount. I had one person in my class a few years back that must have been like, Mr. Vegas or something, because he was always bringing up these things. You know, you bring out a new deck if there's less than so-and-so cards, it's like, okay, you don't really have to do that level of detail, but hey, I'm not going to tell you not to. Or you can just have all the cards in order and then just have a random number generator. Well, card. you know, that's your job as a programmer to figure out. All right? Um, I would suggest looking at, thinking this through and looking and researching the classes that exist in Java to see if, if there are methods that will make your life easier for you. All right. Now, there's two aspects of this program. A lot of times in coding, there's sort of three tiers that you can talk about. There is the tiers, <laughs> tiers T-I-E-R-S, not T-E-A-R-S. There's many more than three tiers, E-A-R-S, in programming, but three tiers, three levels. That's the user interface, the business rules, or I prefer to say problem domain rules, you know, because this isn't really a business, it's a, it's a game. All right, and finally you have persistent storage. We're not worried about persistent storage. In other words, you don't have to keep track of someone's account so that every time they play the game they start with the amount that they left off of or anything like that. Or their one loss record. You don't have to keep track of their one loss record. So really, we're interested in two uh, tiers in here. We're interested in the UI and the business rules or problem domain rules. Now, I always pardon me. Uh, um, me the back end code. Yeah, you could call it the back end code if you want. Yeah, it's it's the rules. It's the logic of the game. All right. Um. Now, um, what I suggest a lot of times when you're doing something, when you, when you have a new project to do, um, especially if it's a little bit bigger one, is to sort of take a mental inventory. And, you know, you might have like, generally I, I sort of in my mind separate things into three rough categories. One is, yeah, I really know how to do that. I've done it a bunch of times before, and I know how to do that, so that's no problem. All right, that's kind of one level of task that you have. All right. Um, for example, you know, I can create a screen that has three buttons on it, let's say. All right, and a 
two labels that says what my score is, what the dealer score is, and if I won or lost. I think you could all probably do that. So that might be one aspect of something that you know how to do pretty well, you know. Then there's things that you might not know exactly how to do, but you've maybe seen something like it, all right? I guess I would say formulating the hands of cards that are going to be displayed. Because like what we saw in the Twitter list, essentially you're going to have a view that gets views added to it, right? You're going to have something on your screen that first is going to start off with two cards, then it's going to show a third card, then it's going to show a fourth card, and a fifth card, and a sixth card, maybe, all right? So we've seen something like that. We've seen that in the Twitter search. We saw a recycler view. That's one way to do it. There's other ways to do it as well. And again, we can talk about those. And then there's finally stuff that maybe you've never done anything like it before and you're really not sure how to proceed. Like, what's the best way to deal cards? I'm not asking you, this is a rhetorical question. I'm not asking you an answer now. Uh, I'm asking, like, maybe you're not sure the best way to do that. All right. So let's first start talking about the UI, and then we'll start, what we'll do as far as we can today with that. I probably will go a little over time to account for the fact that I missed um, last week, and we had uh, the, our, our guest in the, in the beginning. But the UI. Here's what I see for the UI. And by all means, make it look as good as you want. I've had people that developed some beautiful UIs for this project. All right? But at the very least, you should have a layer that says this is the player. And I'm drawing it horizontally. Does it have to be horizontally? No. It could be vertically. I'll say dealer. Horizontally. I might have three buttons here that say play. Hit. Hold. And then I might have a label that says if they won or lost. If you want to expand this to like show like keep a, you know, like, like allow betting, whereas if you play, you know, one game and you win, you go up a certain amount, and you could put in a bet amount if you wanted to. Those are all bells and whistles. For now, this is like, this is where I want to get to sort of minimally, all right? And you can add whatever bells and whistles you want. In this area, you'll add cards. And even through a little playing around with a uh, layout, make it look like this. And have the cards overlap each other to look more realistic, like cards in someone's hand. Alright? That would that would be a cool thing to do. Alright? Now, what UI elements do you see being here? I see a label, a label, three buttons, and another label. All right? Then I see two containers that are going to contain views. All right? What are these views? What, are, what kind of views are these guys? They're image views. All right? So, we're going to have something that contains some image views. Now, there's a couple ways you could do it. And this is where knowing your problem and things like that uh, come in handy. You could do this with recycle views, right? Because we've seen how recycle views can handle a dynamic list of things. All right? You could probably also take a simpler approach. You could probably make each of these layout views. And one be uh, laid out, uh, or linear, linear layouts, or, God, 
what's the name? Is that the name of the control? Linear layout? Yeah. yeah, where it's where it's oriented horizontally. And then you would simply do almost the same thing that we do with a recycler view. We would inflate our layout and set the image to the image of the card and then display it. Okay? Now, we can talk about that next time or some other time. But that code is actually similar to what we've seen already. Some of the aspects are similar, but it's actually a lot simpler. So sort of make that in your notes of something that we could, something to look at between now and next time. How can I inflate a layout and add to a linear layout, add a view to a linear layout? Now play, hit, and hold, you could make those enabled and disabled depending on the circumstances. If a game's in progress, you can make play disabled, right? Because you can't start a new game until the old game is done, right? Otherwise, it looked like you're losing, you could hit play again, right? That wouldn't be good. So you could disable these and enable these properly so that they're only enabled at the right time. That's probably something we have not done, but it's something that isn't particularly difficult to do, if you think about it. There's a property that we can control to make it either invisible or to make it uh, disabled or whatever we can do on a button. So I would say the main challenge for this is creating a UI that I can add cards to. All right? That's probably the main challenge of the UI part. Because when we hit play, Two cards get put here, two cards get put here. All right? One of the cards is not shown, one of the cards is shown for the dealer. For the player, two cards are shown. All right? And then every time we hit, hit the hit button, we get another card. All right, now, that's the UI portion of it. I think. And tell me if I'm wrong, but I think what we should focus on discussing this in class is the whole idea of inflating and adding views to a linear layout. So that's what I'll focus on like next time, going and creating and making a dynamic GUI that's going to add stuff to a linear layout. Now, on the back end, on the business or problem domain rule side, all right? Let's think about what classes that we have, all right? Let's think about what classes we have when we play blackjack. How do you determine what classes exist in a problem? What's a, what's a way to determine? Like we had the dice game, right? And we had a rules um, module or rules class, and we had a dice class, okay? How do you identify what classes we're going to need to do sort of the problem domain part here. One easy thing is look at physical things. Absolutely. One easy thing is to look at physical things. Um, just to, to build on that just a teensy bit, talk about the problem and note the noun. And again, they may not all be relevant, but a lot of them are going to be relevant. What are you going to have when you play bat blackjack? Cards. You have cards. A game. A game. All right. Or a deck. A deck. You, did you say or deck? Or a deck. Or a deck. A, yeah, deck. That's it. Deck. Okay. Um, what else do we have? Exactly. All right. Let's think about let's think about the deck and cards. We probably have a few other objects as well or classes. A player, a dealer. All right. Um, another way we could say it is a hand. Uh, I, I guess a player and a hand is roughly the same. A player has it. Yes. Yeah. Um, and we we have you mentioned the game, which is essentially the the, the game logic, the game rules needs to be encapsulated somewhere. So let's talk about the cards right now. 
because I like that. We have a deck of cards. All right. Remember when we're identifying a class, we want to know what things exist in the class, what attributes, what qualities, and we want certain behaviors in the class. All right. So, our deck. You mentioned it's a collection of cards. Okay, so let's start out with the card class. What are some attributes that would exist for a card? Suit. What's the type of, the data type for the suit? Well, you can make it a string if you want it. All right. I would suggest it up there on value. A string? Or you can make it an enumeration. Enumeration. Maybe an integer. Whereas zero is spades, one is clubs, two is hearts, three is diamonds. All right? Wouldn't matter, but we're going to need the suit some way. All right? And these are all good options. Remember, I want you folks to have the fun of writing this. So I'm not going to give you right answers. We're going to discuss this, and you can think about it. And again, depending on your Java skills. You know, if you've never covered enumerations, maybe now would be a good time to check them out. All right? If you know enumerations, now might be a good time to use them. Or maybe you say, look, I'm struggling on this part. I know how to do it with a string. I don't really want to worry about enumeration right now. Then don't worry about enumeration. It's, it's, it's largely up to you. It's your project. What else? So we could put a value here. What else could we do? associated with it. What's another reason that I might want not want to do that? Well, the ace has two values. Ace has two values, right? Okay. And that could be tricky, so I can't name the value of an ace. There's going to have to be logic somewhere to calculate the value. Yeah. All right. What's another reason I might want to calculate the value? It's a little bit subtle. This might not say No, well, no, not probably not really. This really the, the question the answer I'm looking for doesn't have anything to do with blackjack. Alright? Because there are other games, card games, where there's different valuations for cards. Right? Uh, I'm not a real big card play, card player. But, for example, in some games, ace is considered low, and some games, ace is considered high. Right. All right? So in Rami, there's different values associated with the cards, right? Um, and there's different things that you can do with the cards and so on and so forth. So therefore, points for a card isn't a quality of the card. It's a quality of the card within the game of blackjack. So that's part of the rules. It's just like a goal, you know? What's the value of a goal? Well, it depends. Are you talk about basketball? Are you talk about a three-point shot, a two-point shot, soccer, where it's a one-point goal? Whatever. All right? That's, that's a crappy analogy. All right? The, the point is, is that the value of the card could depend on the card game. So if we're talking about, and we're, we're attempting to encapsulate everything about 
a certain entity in code, we look at what's relevant and what's truly a characteristic of that entity, and the value of a card game uh, of a card is actually different depending on the game. So it could vary with the context. That's not really part of the card. Okay, so I would say we have a suit and a name. What are some methods that we're going to have? Are we going to have a constructor for a card object? Yep, and what's that constructor going to look like? We have a constructor for the card that's going to accept a suit and a name. What other methods are we going to have? Well, for, for your game, you're going to have to have, well, you should have getters and setters. Okay, so you got gets and sets. So get suit, get name, we're calling it. as well as set suit and set name. Why would you change the suit or name of the card? Um, well, some of them might be just getters, I guess. Right. I mean, your, yeah. Well, here, here's good programming practice. Your constructor will call the getters and setters. All right? So, in other words, if you have validation in here, let's say you didn't use an enumeration, you used a string, and you had some kind of uh, test in here that would say make sure that the suit was one of four values and you'd throw an exception. You would put that in the set, not the get. You would have your constructor call the set and then the set would be the one that would throw the exception. Now in this case, it probably matters less because you're only going to have that one constructor, right? But in other cases where you had multiple constructors, all of them should call the set method. And that way you could have your validation logic only in one place. All right. So, what else do I want? What 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 would what are other things I will call on a card to do? Calculate the value. Okay. As part of the game, for all the reasons that we said before. Yeah, as a method. Well, that won't be a method in the card. That will be if the card can tell me what its suit is and what its name is. The rules class is going to calculate the value. Right. It can also be in the card class. But well, again, that would limit the card class to one game. Oh, right. Yeah. Right. I see. Yeah. You, could, you probably may want something like get image. Get image, exactly. I'm going to put a get image here. Because guess what? What I'm going to have is the image is going to depend on what? The suit and the name of the card. I already have out here on canvas a zip file with a deck of cards. So show your face ought to be a method on a card or get image. I didn't want to go there. I went to my campus, not canvas. Pardon me? <laughs> Towards the end of the semester, I might publish my password for here so you guys can, can catch up on my grading <laughs> for me. I'm actually not doing half bad on grading in this class. A couple of my other classes, I'm a little bit behind. All right. I have out here. If you look at how it's structured, lo and behold, I have ignore.
ignore these extra, this extra file. I have four folders for clubs, diamonds, hearts, and spades. All right, and I have a PNG for each of them from two through ace. So, if you know the suit and the name of the card, you can construct the image. All right. So I would, I would have a method that did that for me. So all I have to do is say, "Give me the image," and it will get the image for it. Notice I've also included a back PNG, which represents the back of playing card. All right. So you can do that for the dealer. I want to talk about the deck. All right. Because What's in the deck class? What is in the deck class? <coughs> what is a deck of cards? A collection of cards. When you hear the word collection, what structure do you think of? What data structure do you think of? An array list. An array list. Why an array list? Why not an array? Right. The number of cards in the deck is going to change, right? You start off with 52. I deal one to you, one to myself, one to you, one to myself. Now there are 48 cards in the deck. You take a hit, there's 47. You take another hit, there's 46. I take a hit, there's 45. So there's a variable number of elements in the list. So I'm going to have an array list. And what object is going to be contained in that array list? An array list of strings, integers, enumerations? Card objects. Cards. Right. That's one thing that is hard, I think, sometimes for my beginning Java students to get. You know, they're used to creating arrays of, of strings and integers and stuff like that. But when they start thinking of, you can actually you know, this is just another data type. It's a data type that we've made. All right? And therefore, we can make, and we can make an array of these. All right? What are some things, what are some methods that are going to exist on the deck? And again, it's helpful to think of what you actually literally do to a deck. So, you're going to get a card. Okay, so we're going to get a card. So we could call that deal. All right, or get card. Which card is it going to get? Uh, well, I would just get one on the top. <laughs> one on the top. Okay, right. This isn't this isn't a dealing off the bottom of the deck or anything. We're not going to build cheating capabilities into this. What does this function return? Card. Returns a card object. What arguments do we give it? You don't give any arguments. You just say deal. Give me a card. All right. So. It's going to return element zero from that array list, let's say. And then it's going to remove that element from the array list. Do we know how to reference element zero in the array list? Well, I don't know. We probably do. But if not, you can review the array list, Java docs, and see what allows us to pull out a certain element in the array list. There's methods in the array list that allow us to access the different objects in the array list. Plus you'll need to remove the Plus we'll need objects. to remove it. Exactly. Do we know how to do that? Maybe or maybe not, right? If you don't know, you know where to look, right? Because there's going to be a method, or there ought to be a method, somewhere in the array list that says remove this element from the array. All right? Array, array list. So the pseudocode for this is going to be grab a pointer to the first card, remove that card object from the array list, and then return that card. 
That's all dealing is. All right? What other methods are we going to have for a deck? Shuffle. Shuffle. All right? What, will that return anything? No. Do we need any arguments? No. So we're going to have a void shuffle. Wow. How would you write an uh, algorithm to shuffle a deck of cards? That's my answer exactly. I don't know how to write an algorithm. I mean, I guess I kind of know, but it sounds like a pain in the butt. So, there very likely might be a method on array list that, quote, shuffles the deck. All right? So what do you basically mean by shuffle? You mean take and randomly arrange the elements. If the array elements are 0 through 51, all right, um, then it will rearrange them in some seemingly random order, all right, some pseudo-random order or some random order. So there'll be, and, and hint, hint, look to see if there's something available before you try to write something yourself. Finally, there's probably one more method that we need here. Right, you need to create, you need to create, uh, you need to create a full deck. That might be the constructor of the deck, or you could have an initialized deck method, or you could have a constructor that calls the initialized deck method. All right, and what would that do? What would the method? What would the card? initialize, what would the deck initialize routine do? It will just print the array list and populate it with the 50, it 52. 52 cards. Yeah. It would loop through. We, we need a list of suits somewhere, right? We need a list of names somewhere, probably in an array somewhere, all right? And we're going to loop through those arrays and create a card we're going to run through each suit, and then we're going to run each name for each suit, and when we're done, we'll have 52 cards, and then we probably shuffle the deck to give them in random order. So we need some sort of initialize, and that's also probably going to be void. It's not going to return anything, and it doesn't really need any arguments. So those are, that is your card and deck objects. Probably. Now, we may, we may miss something. You know, we may have forgot something. All right. But in a nutshell, that's what it is. And in deal card, well, whatever. I was, I was going to say, like, if you have less than so many cards, start with a fresh deck. Forget about that for now. We're, gonna, we're just going to start every hand with a fresh deck. All right. So, in a nutshell... This is your deck and card classes. This is a description of your decks and cards. Is there any inheritance in this situation? Okay. Why do, why do you say no? They seem to be a standalone. Okay. They don't need methods from Okay. They don't share methods or attributes. Yeah, the is, a, the is a test doesn't hold true. A deck is not a card. A deck is comprised of cards. A card is not a deck. A card is a part of a deck. Therefore, in this case, that's another kind of relationship between classes called composition, where a bunch of these make up another class, that these are parts of this class. Cards are part of a deck. Another class we will need will be a hand, all right? Will be very similar to that. Now, the hand is uh, probably going to be unique to blackjack, right? Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe it's just, a, you know, because you have hands in a bunch of different card games, so maybe it wouldn't be. And there's some similarities between them, right? You can add cards to it. Um, so you might use some sort of inheritance for that, right? Because like in a blackjack game, like compare blackjack to, say, um, uh, rummy. Cards leave your hand in rummy, all 
all right? You pick up a card and then you discard a card. So, again, it's been ages since I played Rummy, so I, I think you do that, <laughs> all right? Plus, you put down points to score. So, you're right. There could be an inheritance. There could be a basic hand that has the basic behaviors that exist in all hands, and then that could be overridden for... Uh, for example, in blackjack, you get one card at a time. In rugby, you could pick up the discard pile and get five cards. So, yeah, there could absolutely be uh, inheritance there. All right. Start thinking about these and start thinking about the code involved for these. Next time, we'll talk a little bit more about this, and we'll work on the uh, we'll work on elements of the UI and discuss the UI in more detail. I did want to look at what your first assignment is, because your first assignment, I don't, uh, first assignment of these, um, of this is not due until next week. Let me see. What is lab six? Okay, lab six, the design is due for the blackjack game. Um, that is due this uh, Thursday. Because we missed a day of class, if you want to turn that in late, you're welcome to. I won't officially change the due date, but I won't. I, I promise not to deduct if it's late. All right. So uh, we'll talk about that more a little bit on Thursday, and we'll talk about what is due for the next lab. Because the next lab, all essentially you have to do is be able to, to deal cards to a player and add it to theirs. So you don't even have to do any scoring or anything. All right. Okay, that's all I had. I will see you in lab.